Welcome back to a new video about bezel response design of a filter using LC ladder configuration. This is our example number three. In this example, we will discuss the bandpass filter design using the bezel response and also the configuration of LC ladders. Of course, we will work out our calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. Our objective is, as said, a bezel response design of a passive LC ladder filter configuration for a bandpass filter. And we need use, you need to use a 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit. The generalized filter is here, and this is the source resistor, the low resistor. They are both of them are 1 ohm normalized. And we will see shortly what we need to do with these values in our final design. The specification is also given. We have a maximum pass interval of 1 dB. And the minimum storm attenuation is 20 dB. We have a lower passband frequency of 300 kilohertz, upper passband frequency of 500 kilohertz. We have also a lower stop band frequency of 100 hertz, kilohertz, and we have an upper stop band frequency of 1.5 megahertz. So we have also these specifications for this design. So let's go to our solution step by step. First step is the passband normalization coefficient CP as we did in the previous videos for our bezel response design. Now for a given maximum passband ripple a max which is in this case 1 dB you can translate that to the coefficient normalized passband coefficient here CP and that lies between a 0 and 1 which relates that a max which relies then between 0 dB and 3.01303 dB. So that there's a table that will then list this uh, CP values to a specific passband ripple we want and also a filter order. And this is a table we would like to use. Now you see here the A max for different values. So 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1. So we look at this one. If I look at this one, I need to have a passband normalization coefficient CP of 0 0.59810. But we need more information. It says actually the filter order can be between 2 and 10. Still not very clear, but you know already it must be at minimum second order and in between. So we need to check more information. That information is actually about the stop and attenuation also. So we need to also look at that. So for that, we look at a graph later. So we know already that for a 1 dB A max, so 1 dB passband ripple, we have a passband normalization coefficient of 0.5981. So let's go to the next step, which is then a passband bandwidth and also the center frequency. So the bandwidth is given by the this equation, which is the upper passband frequency and the lower passband frequency. So this is actually the equation. We don't know what the values are. It's 500 kilohertz minus 300 kilohertz, so it will be then 200 kilohertz. Of course, in the radians, so this is then 4 pi times 10 to the power 5 radians per second or just 200 kilohertz. But we need to use this in radians per second. The set of frequency is a geometric mean between the upper and the lower passband frequency. You again use the values here in, in the specifications. And you can now calculate it will be then 2.433 mega radians per second or this much kilohertz. Now, step three is the normalized passband frequency and also the normalized stop band frequency of this prototype low pass filter because we start always at the low, uh, low pass design low pass filter design and then transform this to a band pass or high pass or stop band stop filter it depends on the problem in this case we go to the band pass filter so we have now here a uh, Omega P, which is a capital letter Omega, you calculate like this. So again, we have an upper and a lower passband frequencies divided by the bandwidth. Now, since this is of course equal to each other, you get always one here. Now, the Omega S, which is then the normalized stop band frequency, is calculated between the upper and the lower stop band frequencies divided by the bandwidth again. That will that will be then here seven. Now. Now you need to use the transition sharpness omega r, which relates then the omega s and omega p. We know omega s is seven and omega p is one, so it will be then seven over one or just seven. The next step is the normalized transition sharpness capital letter omega r prime, and that is related to that omega r we just determined, we have determined in step four, and also the CP from 
step 1. That's actually shown in source 7 times 0 0.5981. That will give us 4.1867. Now we go to now to the band pass frequency scaling factor, KFBP, which is then the band where we have determined, which is here in radians per second, divided by the CP. That is actually what we have determined in the first step and the second step. Now you substitute here the values, we get now here 2.101 mega radians per second. And we will now use this also later in the calculation of the component values. Now the step 7, which is one of the important steps again. This is the filter order. We look at this graph where we see here in the horizontal axis are normalized transition sharpness, capital letter omega r prime. And in the vertical axis, we have this stop and attenuation. Now, we already said that it must be a filter order between 2 and 10. But this stop and attenuation information will make this more precise. So we also need to look at that one. Now, we know it must be 4.1867 here. So we need to look at this. So let's make a red line here around that value, 4.1867. And there is also a green line here for this 20 dB minimum stop and attenuation. Now the intersection in, in here is then here. Now when I zoom in this part, you can see that it is clearly there. So let me make this more clear by zooming in. This is again this normalized transition sharpness and the stop attenuation. You see here the, sharp, uh, the intersection there. Now these lines are the lines for the filter order, for the first order, second order, third order, etc. Fourth, fifth and sixth order. You see this intersection is below second order, but definitely above the first order. So it must be then at least second order in order to uh, fulfill the specification of this example. So let's go back and then continue with our next steps for this design. And then we know now also that must be then NS2 for this transition sharpness and also from the specifications. Next step is the low pass to band pass transformation. This is the information we have gathered now from the previous discussion. And this is the filter circuit we know from the, also from previous examples, that this is a second order low pass filter circuit. But we need to make a transformation from the low pass to band pass uh, filter. This is the, by the way, the, ba the Bessel response table. We need to use that for a second order because this is the second order part. You see the coefficients X1 and X2 here. These are given here, the coefficients for the x1 and also the x2. x1 is here the c1 value, which is in farads. And x2 here is the L2 value, which is then here in Henry. So 2.1478 Henry's will be then L2. That is all normalized. Now we need to make this transformation. What does transformation mean from low pass to band pass? We transform our capacitor to a capacitor and an inductor in parallel, which is actually shown here. And the inductor will be then changed into an inductor and a capacitor in series. That's the change you make from the low pass circuit to the band pass circuit. So it means actually you go here. This is the transition. Now you see first also CP1 and LP1. So there are the capacitor and inductors in parallel because of the C1. And because of L2, we get now LS1 and, A and CS1. But S is for series and P for parallel. In addition, we see also RS prime and RL prime. They are the scaled up versions of the RS and RL because we need to have 50 ohm. So they go from one ohm to 50 ohm, also 50 ohm. Now we need to calculate the values here. So let's go one by one through the formulas. Formulas here we have now CP1 is again related to C1, which is that value for 0 0.5755. And KM is 50 because we go from one ohm to 50 ohm. So the magnitude scaling factor is 50. And we also know this KFBP, which is our band pass frequency scaling factor, which is already given here. So that's also shown here. So if we now do the calculation here, you get now 5.4782 nanofarads. Now LP1 is calculated using again in a similar form as we did in the previous examples, but then using the center frequency. And again, also the coefficient C1 and also the KM and the KF band pass. So you get to do the calculation here, you get now 30.8. 5 microhenries. CS1 is also calculated using a similar calculation of the LP1, but then using the coefficient of L2 that's shown here, and you get now 3.3039 nanofarads. 
and let's want to just calculate like that again using the coefficient and also the given values from the table we get now 90 uh, i mean 51.113 micro henrys now we have now the components for the capacitor and inductors now the rs prime and rl prime they are actually quite uh, straightforward so uh, let's do that also first go to the design circuit by the way this is the design circuit but let's all bring all this uh, values also here this is the 50 ohm and 50 ohm because you go from 1 ohm to 50 because of this km of uh, 50. this is by the way the prototype low pass filter and this is the band pass filter we just designed using this transformation and also this transformation here now we have now our circuit now let's see also verify that this is indeed doing the job as expected so Simulation result, this is the body plot for the gain only. You see the band pass characteristic, the shape of it. You see some labels, so let's go one by one. The pass band gain is here, minus 6.0206 dB. And that is because of this filter configuration, because you have an RS of 50 and RL of 50 ohm. So that means at the pass band frequency, this uh, filter will behave actually as unity gain. That means you have that 50 ohm over. 50 plus 50 will be then 0.5 that will be then 20 log of 0.5 will you will get this one and this was a center frequency also so we have also the correct center frequency for from our simulations so what you also have is the gain is minus 7.0584 db at 300 kilohertz now from the baseline which was the minus 6.0206 db you go down by 1.0 378 db it must be actually 1 db so the maximum passband ripple was actually uh, 1 db so we have approximately 0.04 db more is that a great uh, a lot of error not that much actually you can of course improve this by going to a higher order but this is maybe for all practical purposes good enough so we can say that this is also fine and now you can also see a similar uh, result here in the upper pass band frequency the actual the difference here is 0.038 more that means there is not 1 db but 0.038 or 38 millidb larger than actually allowed but that is still very close to what we needed at 500 kilohertz the other one is a lower stop energy innovation so the the frequency is 100 kilohertz here and if i look at this this is then the result you see the gain here at this 100 kilohertz and again going from this baseline down at this value we go down by 21.11 db approximately but we needed 20 db at least so that's good enough so we can say this is according to specifications and the upper one is also similar so you get again uh, we have a value of this one from the baseline again at, at decrease of 21.11 db approximately so we have at 1.5 megahertz also what we wanted so we can say in total uh, although these are a little bit uh, more than expected or more than allowed we can still say the specifications are all fine so we can say that this is this will do the job if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time another interesting video take care